gouvernance de demain, la gouvernance démocratique doit associer tous les niveaux décisionnaires. Un projet de réforme crédible ne saurait se tromper des générations. La gouvernance internationale de l'environnement doit être à l'image d'esprit démocratique qui anime la mission de l'Assemblée générale. Excellencies, dear friends, scientists and experts have now told us the inconvenient truth about global warming. In this regard, I would like to praise the recent work of the IPCC. Now it's up to politics, business and civil society to take over. Climate change has implications for every aspect of our daily life from the environment, health and energy, to economic development, human rights, peace and security, and global governance. While the UNFCC is the negotiating framework on climate change in terms of comp comprehensive action, the General Assembly should be the forum of a concerted action. The debate must focus on the links between innovations, renewable energies, and the environment. Together, we can tackle climate change, achieve dynamic economic growth, and sustainable development. Excellencies, dear friends, as we reach the midpoint of 2015, we must accelerate our efforts to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. It is clear that many will not be reached. Particularly in Africa, achieving the MDGs is not solely a test of our ability to deliver on commitments. It is, above all, a test of our moral obligations and the ethical values that are enshrined in the UN Charter. To achieve these and other development goals, we should demand more of ourselves as well as of this organization. If the United Nations is going to make its full contribution and better serve the needs of developing countries, greater system-wide coordination and coherence will be necessary. I see, as among other priorities for this 62nd session, reviewing progress to implement the counter-terrorism strategy preparing for the Financing for Development Conference in Doha, the commemorative meeting on children, and further concrete steps towards a reformed Security Council, a vital aspect of the United Nations' overall reform agenda. In addition, because there is an increasing urgency to, to develop a sense of respect for the other, which can provide a basis for mutual understanding, friendship, and peace, we must continue to make further progress to promote dialogue among civilizations during the 62nd session. Excellencies, dear friends, I see the future and relevance of the United Nations as an organization that is based on open networks, a network that engages with ideas from civil society, from NGOs, business, universities, medias, and the global public. Whether we like it or not, in some areas we are confronted with widening gaps on issues that are vital to the future relevance of the organization. We all have a responsibility to tirelessly seek out bold compromises based on a greater mutual respect. After all, we all share the common ideal of living in a safer, more prosperous world. I am aware that compromise is not the most resounding of battle cries. In this regard, I am reminded of the famous German philosopher Immanuel Kant, who once said, unquote, out of the crooked timber of humanity, no straight thing was ever made, end of quote. This is, in my opinion, why we have to deal with the knots. In this common endeavor, we are fortunate to have some of the brightest and most able diplomats in the world based here at the United Nations in New York. To you, I pledge my conscience, my compassion, and my capabilities. Your today's decision is recognition of my country's commitment to the principles of the UN Charter, including its contribution to fostering greater stability and cooperation in southeastern Europe. In fact, my country has been actively involved with the United Nations since its inception in 1945. On behalf of my country, the Republic of Macedonia, and myself, I thank you. Blagodaram. Shukran.